In a previous video, we talked about building elaborate pipelines, and in particular, uh, we built this one. This is a pipeline for the Titanic dataset, and uh, we are one hot encoding some variables like the gender and the passenger class. Uh, there was also a thing that we did with the age where we had some imputing that happened, and afterwards we uh, made some features to indicate if you were older than 18 or older than 12. Um, and all of this was generated with a little bit of code that you see here. Now, the code over here, in my mind, is pretty clear. There is a hierarchy in the code, and it is relatively readable. But it is also good to know that there is a slightly alternative way of building up pipelines using some more modern features inside of scikit-learn. And that's what this video will be about. So I'll be reducing the code over here a little bit. After which, we're also going to do a small benchmark. So that's something to look forward to in this video. Now, right off the bat, let's just have a quick look at this pipeline. We are generating some features first, and then the features that we're generating is put in this pipeline below over here. And the reason we split up this way is just a split up concern. So all the featureization happens here, and then we attach a model at the end. Now, let's zoom in on this bit over here. There are two pipelines where first I'm selecting a column, and after that, I am one hot encoding um, the contents. There are three passenger classes, so I would get three columns out over here. And the data set has male or female genders, so I would get two columns out over here. And while you could argue that there's a nice little separation of concerns happening over here, it is good to know that this one hot encoder uh, can actually accept more than one column at a time. So let's just zoom in on that. So I've temporarily made the pipeline a bit smaller. We only have those two pipelines with one hot encoding in them for now. And let's see what comes out when we uh, fit transform this pipeline. The first three columns over here belong to this passenger class, and these two belong to uh, the one over here. But let's now see what happens if I just say, well, let's just have one leg that selects both of these columns, both of which need to be one hot encoded. And let's just remove this leg of the pipeline. then the output remains exactly the same. And that's good to know. If we have a data frame that goes in, then it's totally fine to have a feature union split such that we have different branches of a tree that handle feature creation. But if at the end over here, we are going to uh, one hot encode on both branches and we're really just selecting a column, then we can make do with one less branch. And that might just make it a little bit easier to reason about our code. So I could argue that this is actually a pretty good practice. To make stuff like this just a little bit easier though, uh, scikit-learn has introduced some features uh, a while ago uh, that deal with column selection and transforming. And you can find these features in the compose submodule. And I'll just start by importing the uh, column transformer. Here's how the column transformer works. It is very similar to the general pipeline object in the sense that we pass it a list of tuples. The first thing in the tuple, just like before, is the name that we'd like to assign to this segment of the pipeline. But next, we have a component that tells us how we are going to uh, turn columns into features, and that is followed by the names of the columns that we'd like to uh, put in here. And just to demonstrate, if I were to uh, use this column transformer instead of this feature pipeline over here, the features that come out, again, are exactly the same. But one thing that's just kind of nice here is that I can also add uh, another item. So one thing I might do is I might also have some uh, given features, so to say. These given features I just want to pass through, as in these are just numeric features that are fine as is. Uh, things like the fair and the uh, age come to mind. We can now see that the fair and the age are added uh, just like they would be in a uh, feature union. But you could argue that this column transformer uh, way of writing down the pipeline is just a little bit less verbose. And we're still able to inspect the pipeline as we would normally. But for a lot of pipelines, it might just be simpler um, to use this component instead. Now, you might remember from a previous video that we had this age column and that we were doing something with imputing and then turning it into binary features. Well, we can still do that here because 
A pipeline like this one is a scikit-learn estimator, so that is something we can also just pass through here. And, and as you can see, uh, with this column transformer, we aren't writing a whole lot of lines of code, but we still end up with a pretty elaborate pipeline, uh, just like before. And perhaps just for good measure, uh, this is what the code looks like when we are using a column transformer. And that could feel a little bit less verbose than what we had before over here. I do want to stress that some of this is just personal preference. And if you are already well-versed to write your pipelines this way, there's totally nothing inherently wrong with that. But it is good to know that there is this alternative syntax. And this is something you might want to consider and that you might find preferable. Now, one thing that's good to know is that um, you can use this column transformer class directly, which is what we're doing here. Uh, but there is also a functional uh, equivalent. Just like the pipeline class has a make pipeline function, uh, we can also make use of this more uh, shorthand method of building a pipeline. Now, the main thing that this will give me is uh, the ability to not have to worry about these names. So right now you can see that the names that we've created make an appearance down below here. But um, we can make do without those if we use this functional approach. And if we check the docs, we can also see that we no longer need uh, that list. We can uh, pass uh, a couple of transformer arguments. So there we go. Now if I were to run this, again, I get a proper column transformer going out here. But the main thing that has changed is that these names over here are now uh, automatically generated on my behalf. If you want tight control, then you might prefer the uh, more object-oriented approach of declaring such a pipeline. Uh, but if you want to be quick hand about it, this also uh, totally works. Finally, there is also this extra utility that's just kind of good to mention, um, which is this make column selector function. Definitely have a look at the docs for more elaborate examples. But one thing that's interesting about this column selector is that we're able to pass a regex pattern if we want to select columns. Or alternatively, we can use types uh, to select columns. So one thing that we could do is I could do something like, well, let's uh, select all the things that look like numbers. Then this selector is something that can select all of those numbers. And if I were to use that inside of a column transformer, so let's just run pass through, right? So, so just to understand the correspondence, we still describe what we want to do to the data, and then we describe the columns that we want to select. It's just that right now I have this more elaborate method of selecting the columns. And if I were to run fit transform on my original data, uh, then you can see that indeed it is selecting all the numerical values. Um, and if I were to say, well, exclude those instead, then it's going to select everything that's not a numeric value. So I hope you understand that this is extremely flexible and there are certainly use cases for it. Uh, personally though, I do think that there's also something to be said where it's also good to just be explicit. Uh, these columns are the things going in and only these columns are the things that are going in. Um, something about being really conscious is also maybe a good thing. Uh, but if you're experimenting, um, especially early on in a the project, then uh, this might be very pragmatic. Uh, so there's definitely a use case for this. Now, coming back to our column transformer over here, uh, I do hope that you appreciate that using this more composable syntax with column selection is also a viable option. But the most important thing is that we're still very flexible on how we create these pipelines. I haven't even discussed custom components, and already the library just gives us a lot of Lego bricks that click together very nicely. Before wrapping up this video though, I do want to give a small warning, and that is that you can also overdo this. Uh, and that's also just a concern. So just for good measure, let's do a quick, quick benchmark. I am constructing a pipeline over here uh, with the transformation pipeline that I have got over here, followed by a uh, histogram boosted classifier model. And I'm just gonna cross validate this uh, just to get a impression of how this model performs on this task. The data set's pretty small, which is why I get these results back very quickly. Um, but I get like a 77 mean accuracy score. And for every uh, K fold cross validation, I also see a score listed over here. So, okay, we, we have some numbers. But what I can also do instead is just start with a super simple pipeline from the get-go. 
where I don't really worry about that age stuff. Um, I just try and see if the model can figure out something clever where um, I still do one-hot encoding um, on the gender of the passenger, but I just pass all the other features in directly. Now, some of the thinking here is that the features matter, but the model that follows matters as well. And that passenger class, given that that was an integer value from 1, 2 to 3, I can definitely see how a boosted tree-esque model can just make a cut in there in a way that also makes sense for the task that I have currently. So let's just run this. And in this case, we seem to be a little bit worse than over here, but it's also not that much worse. And you can also make the argument that the difference between the accuracy that we see here might not be that statistically significant. Now, the main point I want to make with all of this is that even though you can be very flexible and you can get elaborate with your pipelines, it's probably not a bad idea to just start simple either. Nine times out of ten, the main thing that you got to do is one hot encode some variables now and again just to make sure that a string is interpreted as a category. But especially if you're applying a boosted classifier after, uh, it can deal with these numeric values quite well in general. So while it is very good that we're always able to make very elaborate pipelines, the art is sometimes also to make very simple pipelines as well.